Come on, let's press. Day six. Pressing into the Holy of Holies. Day six. We're going to start in 30 seconds. Share this with your friends. Invite your followers. It's time to get started. Jesus. Come on, receive this prayer. Come on, God. Jesus. Grace, 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 grace to burn even more bridges, to be more. Oh, sure. Give us grace, 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 grace. We say grace, grace. Come on, who says yes to God today? Holy of holies. Wisdom will be justified. Wisdom will be justified. Wisdom will be vindicated. Thank you, Jesus. I get caught up in the worship sometimes. You must forgive me. I can't help it. God is good and he is worship worthy. Misty Edwards and Lauren Alexandria tag teaming today on the broadcast. Jennifer LeClaire here, senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer, author of our devotional Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still small voice of God. Today's devotion titled, Enter into the ocean of my presence. Kind of sounds like the Holy of Holies, doesn't it? I want you to enter into the ocean of my presence so deeply that you would drown if I were not there to meet you, says God. You ventured out of the shallow water. You waded up to your knees and then your neck. But what I have for you is so deep, you will be fully Immersed. No effort of your own will take you there or keep you there once you enter in. What I have for you demands letting go of all your life rafts <laughs> and allowing yourself to fall deeply into my love with nothing but me to catch you. I am waiting, says the Lord. What a word, my goodness. What an invitation. Come on now. Today's scripture references 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 18, and Psalm verse 5, I'm sorry, chapter 5 verse 7. And the prayer starter for today, my deep is crying out to your deep. Take me deeper still. I will abandon myself in your love and drink of your grace. When I am troubled, reveal your deep love and care for me. Show me the depth of your loving heart. 
I can feel the presence of the Lord. Let's press in today. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. God, we thank you that the sins we committed yesterday are covered in the blood, and your mercy is new every morning. The dumb words we said, the thoughts that we thought, the things that we did that were displeasing to you, you've already forgotten about them. Because somebody needs to hear me this morning. God's already forgotten about what you repented over stop remembering what you've repented over stop thinking about what you did when it's under the blood when you received for you come on receive the forgiveness of the Lord we thank you Lord that you are a forgiving God we thank you we exalt you Jesus our forgiver the one who died to pay the price for every sin we'll ever commit we're not going to walk in condemnation we're not going to walk in guilt and shame any longer I thank you Lord. there's some of you you're still thinking about sins from 10 years ago you're still wallowing in regret from past seasons I ah shaka let's just exalt Jesus he wants to do a work today thank you Jesus 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 we thank you Lord for your mercy and for your grace your mercies your mercies are sure your mercies are a guarantee to us your mercies are part of the promise you made to us when you took us into your kingdom when you adopted us as sons and daughters into your family it's a divine family it's a holy family it's a family that's growing day by day as we preach your gospel God we thank you we give you praise and honor there is no other God like you there is no other God who can forgive sins there is no other God who can lift us up out of the muck and the mire and clean us up wash us with the water of the word and help us to see oh God help us to see help us to see help us to see your goodness help us to see your glory that's where it all started oh day six I get it Lord yes Lord I get it I thank you Lord day six pressing into the holy of holies some of you that are listening to me you're too caught up in your sin your past sin the reminder of your sin the thought of your sin the shame of your sin to press into the holy of holies let me just let me just set you free this morning let me just let me just share the word of the Lord with you this morning when you repented when you said Lord forgive me he removed your sin from you it is as far as the east is from the west and God remembers it no more oh you're only you're the only one who remember you know some of you Lord just show me some of you want to keep th- some of you you got some people in your life and they just want to throw your sin back up in your face it was so long ago the Lord remembers it no more but some of the people around you they still remember it some of the old you just need to tell them it's under the blood I repented the Lord doesn't remember so why why do you you need to confront them on this thing instead of allowing them to back to, 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 to batter you and to, to lash out at you throwing things up in your face it's like some people around you they've got a long list of everything you ever did wrong and every time you make them mad because they're touchy and easily offended and every time every time you're not the one making them mad now they're getting mad because they got a touchy heart they've got a fretful heart they've got a worried heart but every time they get upset with you they they bring out the list Oh, they bring out the list and they want to remind you of your sin they want to remind you of the things that they thought you did that you didn't even do oh I thank you Lord you just kept in this state of 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 of, of having to to repay 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 oh I break all that cycle over you it in the name of Jesus I break that cycle I thank you Lord that when we repent when we ask for forgiveness you throw our sin into the sea of forgetfulness you don't remember it anymore God help us not to remember it help us Lord just to set it aside help us Lord not to get stuck I just see somebody you're just like you just you're, you're trying so hard I guess I see a picture and you're trying so hard to take a step forward but it's like your feet are bolted to the ground they're bolted you, 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 you I, I can just I can feel the strain and the struggle I I, I, I can feel it's like you're how you just can't pull your foot up it's like your feet are bolted to the ground it's a it, but you know what here's the thing Jesus was nailed to a cross so that you don't have to be bolted to the ground come on Jesus was his his hands and his feet were nailed they were bolted to a cross so that you don't have to be bolted to the ground paralyzed and stuck by past sins come on I thank you Jesus I thank you Lord that you died for me I thank you Lord that you died for all those listening to the sound of my voice that 
at you that we would that we would with we would we would not be slaves to sin but we will be servants to righteousness i thank you lord help us lord to shed it off that is what's keeping some of you from the holy of holies some of you have been pressing some of you have been pressing you've been pressing and it's like i i don't feel anything we walk by faith and not by sight but it's your sin many times when you listen many to listen to me many times when you begin to press into the presence of god when you begin to press into the reality uh, of that holy of holies and the existence of it and the invitation to it the, the devil wants to remind you why you're not worthy ah he wants to remind you why you're not worthy, why you don't have access. But the Bible says you have access to the Holy of Holies because the veil was ripped asunder from top to bottom. Jesus made a way. Jesus, our high priest, the high priest of our confession, made a way. And Jesus said, it is finished. And Jesus said, you are forgiven. And Jesus said, I've washed you in my blood. And Jesus said, come on. Jesus said, oh, come on, 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 come on. See yourself. Agree with the high priest of your confession see yourself as in Christ listen there is no sin in Christ and yes we have a sin nature yes we have flesh yes we have sinful thoughts yes we have to deal with these things but we are not condemned and we are not disallowed from the holy of holies there are some of you it's like a cycle some of you listening to me I can I can I'm discerning this now listen this is going to set you free there's a there's a cycle of sin in your life and you're struggling with it and you, you've warred against it. You don't agree with it. You don't like it. But it's like the sin just comes and overtakes you. It's like the sin that's crouching at your door. It's not crouching. And it's not just crouching. It's knocking. And it's not just knocking. It's trying to rip the door hinges off. It's not just trying to rip the door hinges off. It's trying to just barricade you into the sinful state. And you're condemning yourself. And you feel, uh, what is the word I'm looking for, Lord? You feel you, 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 not just trapped. You, you, you almost feel hopeless. I just. It's, a, it's just like it's some kind of hopelessness like I'm never going to beat this thing some of you maybe it's smoking cigarettes you know let me tell you something smoking cigarettes won't keep you out of heaven but you'll smell like hell when you get there you know what you, it's a, some of you it's drinking you, it's, it's drunkenness you don't just stop with a glass of wine I'm not going to get into a debate on whether Christians should drink I don't think I don't I don't drink but you know what some I'm not condemning you if you do but there's a difference between having a glass of wine and getting full on drunk some of you are having a struggle with alcohol some of you are having a struggle oh come on with smoking some of you are having a struggle with eating too much some of you are having a struggle and it's like this pattern of sin because you know it's wrong and every time you do it every time some of you are having a struggle with lust some of you are having a struggle with pornography yes I said it some of you are having struggles 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 it's this pattern and you can't seem to break free but guess what Jesus is your deliverer and just keep crying out to him just keep pressing past all the things all the thought come on just keep crying out and there's a struggle there's a struggle in so many of you it's like you're contending against your own self it's like you're pressing against your own self it's like you yes that's what it is the flesh is warring against your spirit your spirit is warring against your flesh and your flesh is winning more times than you like father I ask you to strengthen all those who have been engulfed in a pattern of sin who will become who will become practicers of sin even against their own heart even against their own conscience and the guilt and the shame that manifest the day after I thank you Lord I thank you Lord that you strengthen all of our hearts that we would not fall to the temptations of the wicked one yes like I see that Lord so the Lord is showing me that in this see in this in this 17 days I believe we're on day six in this 17 days there's a real war it's a real war we didn't maybe expect the war at this level did we we didn't maybe expect the war because the breakthrough is so great remember what does 17 mean deliverance and victory overwhelming victory of course there's going to be a fight of course there's going to be a struggle of course there's going to be contention of course there's going to be resistance but there's going to be a breakthrough it wouldn't be called a breakthrough if there wasn't something to break through father I thank you strengthen our hearts to overcome that's what it is these sin patterns that many of you are struggling with somebody 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 got offended you're like I ain't struggling with no sin patterns well you got a spirit of offense honey let's not be so quick and prideful to think that all of us don't have something in our lives that we need to overcome something in our minds that needs to be renewed something in the way that we speak that needs to be corrected we've all fallen short of the glory of God and there's no one sin that's greater than another except for the abominations listed, list, listed in Scripture. 
Jesus, help us, Lord. Deliver us from sin patterns. Some of them may seem minor to you. Some of them may seem major to you. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. So, Lord, deliver us from, from the, from, deliver us from evil. Your word says, deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So today we cry out on day six of getting on our faces, day six of pressing into the holy of holies. God, deliver us from evil. There's some of you listening to me that you had thought you broke this sin pattern. And all of a sudden you started pressing into the holy of holies and this sin began to arise in your members again. It's because the seed of that sin is still there. It's in your flesh. It's got to be crucified. It's got to be crucified. There's a crucifixion going on. Jesus hung on a cross so that we had access to the Holy of Holies. We've got to get up on a cross. We've got to pick up our cross and follow him. We've got to die daily. We've got to crucify our flesh to get into that place. Somebody doesn't like me anymore. Guess what? I don't care because I've been delivered of you. I pray for you. Purge us, God. Cleanse us, God. Some of you find yourself get a little agitated, get a little, get a little testy, get a little offended, get a little, get, get a little frustrated oh, all day. It, it, it's like you were fine until you started pressing into the Holy of Holies. What's happening? I'm all grouchy. It's that flesh. It's that stuff that's been hidden in you. God is refining you like silver. The dross comes up to the surface when the heat is on. You don't know what you started out asking for, do you? Praise God. You didn't know that when you started out asking to press to the Holy of Holies, that there was going to be some stuff pressed out of you. Guess what? It's worth it, saints. It's worth it, my sisters, my brothers. It's worth it. It is worth it. Jesus. It's a newness of life. It's a newness of life. It's a newness of life. It's a newness of life because 2018 is going to be a blockbuster year. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We're pressing through. We're reaching over to the other side. I can see it. Come on. I can see it. I can see it. I can see the other side. I have hope for you. I have hope for me. I can see the other side. I can see. Come on. I can see the other side. I can see the other side. Yesterday, awakening house of prayer I prophesied that God was going to turn some mourning into dancing some weeping into dancing and by the end of the service oh one of the ladies that was there oh she'd been struggling with some things you could see the oppression when she walked in she'd been coming to the ministry a little bit here a little bit there for years here she'd show up there she'd show up and she started coming I think four or five weeks in a row now and at the end of the service she was dancing and she was shouting and I said ma'am what has happened to you something has changed in you and she just yelled as loud as she could breakthrough freedom freedom she yelled freedom she yelled freedom that's what you're going to be yelling that's what you're going to be dancing a jig to the sound of freedom oh this is the sound of freedom don't give up now it's day six don't give up now come on don't don't stop pressing now there's more for you I said there's more for you there's something greater for you we're going to press past this sin you will come on I have great hope for you you are the right righteousness of God in Christ Jesus greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world come on you are magnificent in him you are holy in him you are righteous in him you are everything you want to be in him all the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God rest upon you it chases you down and overtakes you come on mercy and goodness follow you all the days of your life Lord we renounce our sin Lord we ask you to help us to break these patterns in the name of Jesus, stress patterns, depression patterns, anxiety patterns, fear patterns. All of this is sin. It's all sin. It's all sin. It's all sin. Greed patterns. Isolation patterns. Gossip patterns. Deliver us from evil. Oh God, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Day six. Deliver us from evil. We're pressing in. We're pressing in. We're pressing in. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. There is no other God like you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Transformation is the, is the, is the goal. Transformation. Transformation is the goal. Transformation. 
ki brashta katam brashta. O shukud, be renewed by the entire, be transformed by the entire renewing of your mind. Romans, Paul the Apostle said, be ye transformed by the entire renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. God has a great plan for you. Don't stop pressing. Don't stop pressing. Don't get offended when the preacher starts talking about sin, forgiveness, restoration, reconciliation. Don't stop listening. Don't turn off your spiritual ears when it comes to something that you think you know. <laughs> Let me tell you, you know what you know? You know the word that you know? We're so, we're so fat and happy in the American church. You know what you, we think we know it all. <laughs> you know what you know? It's what you do. If you're not doing the word, you don't know it. Because if you, if you, <laughs> if you knew the word, you'd be a doer of it. Hearing the word doesn't make you a knower of the word. The doers of the word are the knowers of the word. Because when you really, it's the truth that you know, listen. It's the truth that you know. It's the truth that you walk in that's going to set you free. It's not the truth that you've memorized. <laughs> it's not the truth that you've memorized. It's good to memorize the word. But you can memorize lots of things. It doesn't change you. It's the truth that you know. It's the truth that you walk in. It's the truth that you do that sets you free. Everything else is just deception. And pride and arrogance. I know, I know, I know. I'm glad you sat in the, in the church for 30 years and you know the word. How come your life is such a mess? Don't get mad at me. Now, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to provoke you to a righteous indignation because the enemy thinks he's got one up on you, but God is going to bring you up and over. Religion has said, well, you know the word. Well, if you don't know it, if you ain't doing it. And if you really know the word, the word works. The word never fails. It 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 always works. It might take it some time to work because you've got such a mess in your life from many, many, many years of whatever it is that's happened or going on or whatever. But the word will work if you put it to use. But it's the word that we do that sets us free. Mashti. Brishi kete roko toli okoto rakata mashi kete kata. Jesus. Jesus, we might fail to do the word, but the word never fails. Set us free, God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I have something I want to share with you about the power of decrees. I'm going to share that in just a moment. Uh, I, I, I can't get past a, three paragraphs in Joshua without getting a, a revelation or, or something very timely for the body of Christ right now. So I, I begin to, to read Joshua. And when I get that revelation, I study it out. Then I move on. I just read the Psalms or the Proverbs. or uh, I'm, re, I'm studying the ministry of the apostle in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians and, and just going and earmarking all the functions and the manifestations of the apostolic gift gift somebody recently posted something on facebook about uh you know how most of the people that call themselves apostles are not i think that there's some truth in that but i also think that that uh, that there's a a, a, found, a, a a foundational misunderstanding of what apostles are and what they do and there's this tendency by some to want to put all apostles in a box and say well you got to check down these tick marks and if you're not doing this this and this you're not an apostle you know what there's many different kinds and functions and expressions of the apostolic and i think it's very arrogant to to to, to uh, presume and assume to correct the body of Christ when you're not operating in that gift yourself and haven't functioned in it, don't understand it, haven't studied it. So there you go. But I'm studying, I'm st you know, it's one thing to read the word, it's nothing to study the word. For years and years, I read the word. And in, in, in more recent years, I've been especially more, this last season, I'm digging deep into the word. You got to dig deep, amen? Let the word deep, dig deep in you, praise God. I want to give you an opportunity to sow into the ministry today. We're going to take up our, our offering, uh, praise God. Uh, we're going to do that for God's glory. Remember, in this 17 days, you want to sow as much as you can. Words, kind words, acts of service, finances, clothes out of your closet you don't wear anymore that somebody could use a lot more than you. We want to sow, 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 sow on these 17 days. We, ought, we want to always be sowers and givers. We should give something every day. If it's a prayer, you know, a kind word, you should be, uh, develop a lifestyle of sowing. 
but I want to give you an opportunity to sow financial resources into this ministry. We need your help to do what God has called us to do. We're a body of Christ. You might not be called to go spend a month in New Zealand and Australia and Scotland, but I am. And it costs. It costs. There's things I can't do back here at home that I, that I need to do that I have to put on hold to go and, and sow uh, they're asking me to teach about Jezebel. Yeah, I get more uh, a request to teach about Jezebel and the nations probably than any other one single thing. When people ask me to come, if they ask me to preach on something, more often than not, it's Jezebel. Why? Because that spirit is running rampant in the nations, and there's been such a misunderstanding about it and how to conquer it, how to resist it. That comes at a price that costs me. It comes with a price. It comes with warfare. <laughs> So your, so your prayer, so your financial resources. You want to sow prayer, join my intercessory prayer team, prayforjennifer.com, and pray for the finances to come in. But if you have the means to sow, I'm asking you to sow. I'm asking you for your help to do what God's called me to do. This is going to be a monumental trip to Australia, New Zealand. Praise God. It's going to be monumental, but it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me. It's going to cost me like, like physically, and it's going to cost me it's going to cost me financially. Amen. So help me. Help me get there. Help me do what I need to do. You are a partaker of the rewards that come from my ministry when you sow into the ministry. Amen. You can give online, jenniferleclair.org slash donate, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can become a partner there. Hopefully we're launching the new website within a couple of days in beta mode and practice mode, and you guys can help me test it out. Right now, but the old site's still there, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can use text to give, 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. I want to remind you that this is not for prayer requests. If you want to do prayer requests, go to 247prayerroom.com. You will not get uh, uh, an answer to a prayer request on the text to give line, okay? It's just not designed for that. It's not that we're being mean, you just... It's not what it's for. It's not what it's for. 754-701-2161. Type the word pray, P-R-A-Y. You can use PayPal. If you're international, use PayPal. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Or if you want to mail a check or money order, uh, you can do that also. I've got a new P.O. box. I still have the old one. just takes me a lot longer to drive down there. So I'm shifting everything. Please do use the Fort Lauderdale uh, P.O. Box, P.O. Box 30563. I memorized it. Praise God. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33301. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33301. It is cold in Fort Lauderdale. It is cold in Fort Lauderdale. I had to turn off my air conditioner. Praise God. Baby prophet had to put on her heater. We don't put on heaters in Florida. All right, I'm looking for the bot. We'll see it, amen. Imagine it's cold in Kentucky. Let me pray over this offering. Father, I thank you for all those who are giving I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Maybe it is 33303. Maybe I didn't memorize it. Somebody's, inter- somebody's, uh, somebody's, somebody's trying to help me out here, and I don't know. You're probably right. That's why I don't look at the thing when I'm praying, because I'm always saying something. Somebody's trying to help me out. Is it 33303? Somebody give me a word. Prophesy. I ain't got no time to be looking up P.O. boxes. 30563. It is 33303. You win a prize, praise God. I bless you. That's your prize. You're blessed. It's 33303. Maybe tomorrow I'll have it memorized. Shift, change, transition. It's a journey. Father, I thank you for all those who are giving In the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to multiply this back to them, God. Make it apparent that the seed they've sown in this ministry has produced a harvest in their life, as you have for so many others over the years and over these last months especially, the increase that we're seeing. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 
that you multiply, multiply, multiply. God, I thank you that you're not into the subtraction business. And even though you add, you most often multiply. So, Lord, I ask you to bless this offering. Sanctify it for the work of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Listen, I want to put a bug in your ear. I'm looking for T-shirt ideas for the Mornings with the Holy Spirit prayer, prophetic prayer calls. We have a brand new site for Mornings with the Holy Spirit launching any day now. And I'm, I'm wanting to make a T-shirt, and I've thought about it, and I cannot think of a good, a cool saying. Um, there's, I thought of a different number of things, and I just can't think of anything really cool. It has to be really cool. Like I've got a Dream Wild shirt. I've got a Come Out of the Cave shirt. I've got an Angel shirt that says My Angels Are on Assignment. Amen. And so I want something really cool. I don't want it to be mornings with the Holy Spirit because that's not, I mean, that's cool, but it ain't cool on a t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. So if anybody has any ideas, email in, please. I'm, I hesitated to do this because there will be some who get offended if I don't choose their idea. Please don't get offended. I can only choose one. <laughs> I can't make, you know, 12 t-shirts right now. Amen. And I don't want it to be something that somebody else already has on their T-shirt or something very obvious. It needs to be something really cool, like, like, like a statement, like a decree, like a declaration, like not, not something that we all normally would always say all the time as a matter of course. Amen? So I don't know what that would be, but you can, uh, you can, uh, you can send me your ideas uh, at info. At jenniferleclair.org, you can send it. Let me just say this too. You know, I, some of some people are under the. I want to set this straight so that people don't get upset. Uh, some people are under the uh, the uh, impression somehow that I answer every email that comes to the minister, or that I'm actually even reading them. Uh, I don't. I can't. I'm getting a thousand messages a week, um, and so everybody that emails the ministry, my staff tells me they think they're emailing you directly. Uh, <laughs> I understand why you would think that because I'm very personal. I'm very relational. But, but please understand that I don't answer all these emails. There are tons of emails coming in. Amen. So don't get upset if you don't get an answer. If, you, if I'm not answering you, I can't physically do it. I could sit up 24 hours a day and answer emails and never, ever even finish answering the emails. Amen. So, so understand, I'm not, I'm, not the, I'm not the one answering most of these emails. Every once in a while, I might pop in and answer something, uh, but it's not me. So please don't, please don't get upset, uh, you know, because it's, it's, it's not, I, I can't. I wish that I could, but I can't. I can't do what God's called me to do and answer email all day at the same time. Amen? T-shirt ideas. Um, also, I wanted to tell you that the, the progress on the 24-7 prayer radio is, is being made. I'm talking with the guy today. Again, um, it, we're going to have that up and running soon. Hopefully, it'll be up and running by the time the new site uh, takes off. And there's also going to be a mobile app. I need to get your feedback. I need to get your feedback. I'm going to have to charge something for the mobile app or else make it a subscription because the cost of streaming on a 24-7 app, the server costs are really expensive and I can't absorb what. So I don't know if I, if, I, if I can, I don't know what will be tolerated. It's not about making money. It's about covering the cost so that we can get this prayer, this mobile app. You know, people in, in Korea and China, they'll go on a mobile app on their phone and stuff where they want, they, 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 some of them are like, even in Africa, there's, there's, there's places where people actually, uh, people actually, uh, they don't have computers, but they, they actually have smartphones. And so, so what, what, what would I do? Like I'm praying about it. To, it's like a dollar a month or do I charge $5 for the, for the app or, or, you know, like is it, is it $2.99 a month or what is tolerable? What is tolerable? Prophet Vanessa, you're going to have to help me uh, see the, uh, see the, uh, figure out what, uh, what, what, what people are saying because I'll miss it when I do these announcements. So I, I don't, you know, I don't want to charge for it. It's not that I'm, it's not a money-making venture, but it's, it's, I'm trying to cover the cost of doing it. So let me know what's tolerable. I almost think like a dollar a month would, you know, would be, it's like $12 a year, but that's a, a continual subs subscription. Amen. Just charge for the app. Yeah, but then how much do you charge for it? I don't do well with, with, with things like money because my heart is just to give away, give away everything for free, but then, I, and then, I, but then I'm bankrupt. I can't do it, and that's not, uh, that's not uh, four ninety nine a month. That might be too high for people. I don't know. So if you have ideas on that as well, uh, you, know, you can email the office if I don't catch it here. Um, there are other apps out there that, that charge, and... Uh, and uh, it's not unusual at all. We pay for apps all the time. So, um, amen. All right. So you guys can let me know. 777 for the app. Amen. 
charge for the app, one-time fee. Okay. All right. So we will we will do we will do that. We will get into that. I want to remind you that or actually I want to announce to you that we're on uh, the last Sunday of the year, which I don't know what is the last Sunday of the year. Is it the uh, is it the thirty first? I think it is. Yeah. New Year's Eve service, our regular church service will happen on New Year's Eve. It's going to be on at one thirty on December, but we're having a special event on that day uh, at, during our church time, and that is uh, it's about breaking toxic soul ties and alignment. I'm going to go deep in this. I don't want any of you going into 2018 with things that are with bridges that need to be burned, broken and burned. See, some of you break bridges, but you don't bro- you don't burn them. And if you break a bridge and you don't burn a bridge, you can rebuild the bridge. But when the, when, the, when the bridge is burned down completely and it's just ashes, there's not much of a temptation to rebuild it. Not as much of a t- temptation to rebuild it. So we're having a special event on uh, December the 31st it's before, you know, just at 1.30 Eastern time. So it'll be before. But you're gonna, we're going to break all this stuff. Now let me tell you what happened yesterday on, at ahop.online. If you're not part of our e-campus, ahop.online, I talked about pain. Prophet Vanessa got up and declared a word about the Lord was going to reveal hidden pain. And, and the Lord had already showed me that, but I didn't have an unction to release it. And she, and she did, so she did that, and, and, and it was well received, and there was a no judgment zone, and people got absolutely free. I mean, people came up to us after saying, I mean, I, they said, I felt the pain of abuse, leave me. And it was phenomenal what the Lord did. And you want to go watch that, you can watch that. It's just registered to be an eCampus e- member, ahop.online. But the AHOP, uh, the event on December 31st, that's going to be on ahop.tv. So you can register for that there. Amen. Ahop, ahop. online for yesterday's service. Ahop.tv for the December 31st service. And then, of course, Chuck Pierce is coming on Thursday, he'll be here Thursday. We're having a conference Thursday and Friday. The attendance is mega low. I don't know why. If you know people in South Florida, help me get the word out. Actually, someone, a pastor I know in the region had said he was going to send out a blast, and he did not do it. Um, and so I'm sure that was an oversight on his part, but that was... Uh, and then our email guy that handles our email had our email list jacked up so that basically instead of it going out to you know 5,000, it went out to four people. So we're trying, but I'm, I'm shocked and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want Chuck to get here and there be nobody at the meeting. Amen. So help me get the word out. If you know people in South Florida, you can also watch on the live stream, ahop.tv. If you want to watch the live stream, I have a revelation on prophesying the glory. I've been studying it for weeks now and, uh, and the Ichabod prophets and, uh, the, which the Ichabod prophets are no glory prophets. There's a shift happening in prophetic ministry from uh, hearing the word only to moving in power and glory and I'm going to share about that on the during the uh, during the conference when I preach on Friday night amen so God is good those are the main things I wanted to mention remember school the spirit dot TV you can go there and sign up for different programs and trainings and things that will help you in your walk now I'm also turning these uh, le- these teachings into podcasts which is why I sort of shift and almost reintroduce at the end. So today I want to talk to you about the power of a decree. The power of a decree. You know, there are times to lift up petitions to heaven, to ask the Lord to do a thing. There are other times when we need to release spirit-led decrees now we have to be careful that we don't uh, determine to decree a thing by the movement of our own heart because we can be in error but when we make a decree that is word-based when we make a decree that is spirit inspired we cannot go wrong even if it's not the Lord's will to decree a thing if you just stick with the word the worst thing that can happen is when you stick with the word with the word of God with the logos it, it, the worst thing that can happen is well it's just sent out there in the spirit and when it's time for it to work it'll work sometimes I think we make decrees in other words prematurely sometimes we make decrees uh, at the wrong time sometimes we make decrees we sense a thing that God wants to do but we're out of timing so the worst thing that can happen if you decree something from the written word of God from the Bible if you take a scripture and decree and declare it you, you're not an error you can't go wrong but you can go wrong by decreeing something out of your flesh out of your heart out of anger you can go wrong by decreeing presumptuously uh, you know outside of the Word of God prophetically 
So if we, listen, if we stay grounded in the word and decree the word, you can never go wrong. Your timing might be wrong, but the word is still right. But when we get off into decreeing by the spirit, we must discern, is this the spirit leading me or is this my flesh, my soul, my anger? You don't want to make decrees rashly. Joshua, uh, he made a couple of decrees that I read about in scripture. One of them was uh, that the, 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 child, the firstborn child of the one who rebuilt the walls of Jericho would, would die. Uh, and so we see later on, uh, many years later after Joshua died, that someone tried to rebuild the walls of Jericho and their firstborn son died. And so this was something that, now was that a decree, spirit-led decree? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I know that decrees have power, even if they're not spirit-led. Decrees still have power. So we have to be, you know, with, with fear and trembling, release a decree. We don't want to, now I imagine Joshua's decree was spirit-led, but I don't know. It doesn't say the Lord told him to say that. We don't see that he spoke to the Lord about it. Uh, we just see that there was a decree and then someone died. And so we have to be very careful that we don't curse in the name of decreeing you understand and I'm, again I'm not saying that's what Joshua did I'm saying I don't I, and I'm, I'm sure it was not his heart to curse uh, even if it wasn't directly indicated or prescribed by the Holy Spirit but we can in anger decree a thing and actually turn into a curse there was a an elderly woman that I knew one time and she was so upset that her granddaughter was uh, was let go from a job now she wasn't let go the granddaughter was not let go uh, because she did anything wrong it's just that there was none of positions that were downsizing and they had to let the daughter go well she actually cursed the owner of the company and this was a Christian woman who loved the Lord said she basically decreed that his business would fail and so that was a curse because it came out of anger so we don't want to do that but here I want to show you in Joshua 10 this is the crux of what I want to share with you the power of a decree now this is really 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 interesting I've, I've, I've read this many times thought about it from many angles listen to this this was uh, when, uh, when, uh, when, the Amor when the Amorites had uh, deceived Joshua and the Israelites and, 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 and they didn't discern uh, the motives of their heart and they had to end up going to a, fighting a war that, that they shouldn't have had to fight. But let me just skip down here to, to, to Joshua 10, verse 12. Listen now. On the day the Lord gave over the Amorites to the children of Israel, Joshua spoke to the Lord and said... In the few, full view of Israel. Now notice, he's going to make a decree. He's going to make a decree. Sun, sun stands still over Gibeon. Okay, he's decreeing the sun will stand still. Okay, but what did he do before he made that decree? Joshua spoke to the Lord. So I believe Joshua was led by the Spirit to make a decree, or he prayed to the Lord. He spoke to the Lord. What is praying to God? It's speaking to God. Joshua spoke to the Lord. And said in full view of Israel, sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stood in place until the people brought vengeance on their enemies. The sun stood still, still in the middle of the sky. It did not set for a full, for about a full day. There has not been a day like this either before or after it when the Lord obeyed a man, for the Lord waged war for Israel. Now, the Lord didn't really obey a man. That was their understanding of it. The Lord got into agreement with man is what happened. The Lord got into agreement with Joshua's decree. Now, this is the power of a decree. What a powerful decree that, 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 that the sun would actually stand still. But here's what's even more powerful. Here's what's even more powerful. The sun didn't actually stand still because the sun doesn't stand. The earth revolves around the sun. The sun doesn't revolve around the earth. But see, Joshua didn't know that. All he knew is that he wanted it to be daylight a little longer so he could go ahead and finish off the enemies of the Lord. But see, the Lord is not religious. And there are some times we, we get an unction. We get a, a, a moving in our spirit to decree a thing. And we might not even have the, the, the exact specific perfect language. But God is not religious. So when, when, he, when, he, when he decreed, sun stand still over Gibeon, huh, the Lord knew what he meant, that he wanted the, 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 the sun to not go down. And so the earth actually stood still. And here's the thing, another, another thing from this uh, scripture, God will make heaven and earth stand still for you sometimes. God will, will, will deliver your enemies into your hands. God will do whatever it takes, in other words. The principle I'm trying to tell you is that God will do whatever it takes to bring victory if you're in it, if you're in agreement with God, if you are in it to win it, if you have faith, if you don't fear. God told Joshua over and over, do not fear, 
Be strong and courageous. Do not fear. Be strong and very courageous. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. So Joshua shows us the power of decree twice in scripture. Once when he said, hey, whoever rebuilds these walls of Jericho, their firstborn will, will die. That came to pass. And when he decreed, the sun stands still. That came to pass. There is a power in a decree. So we must keep our decrees. We must keep our decrees pure and holy. We don't want to curse through our decrees. And we must get into agreement with what we know God wants to do. Being spirit-led and getting into agreement with his heart. And you can't go wrong. Amen? Even if you don't use the right language, God is not religious. He's not a religious spirit. He doesn't have a religious spirit. And he is able to comprehend what is on your heart. And he will show you things to come. I want to pray for you. I want to remind you to go to schoolofthespirit.tv if you're interested in the prayer and mentoring intercession program school of the seers it's all there it's all there it's all there on school of the spirit tv father i thank you for the anointing that is on our words god give us a revelation of the anointing that is on our words god that we might not speak rashly that we might not decree a thing apart from your spirit that even if we decree a word we're decreeing it out of the right spirit Help us, Lord, not to, 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 to lace our decrees with curses, whether subtle or forthright, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, give us revelation, more revelation, more and more revelation on the power of a decree. Petitioning is a wonderful thing, and you've given us permission to petition. You've given us permission to petition, but you've also given us the audacity to decree a thing and watch it come to pass in Jesus' name. You can find me online at jenniferleclair.org. Bless you.